Today, I'm gonna to show you how I pack for a trip. You know, the essentials. So I get a lot of comments on our videos that we travel a lot. Well, we are a travel channel. But what a lot of people don't realize is that we live very close to a lot of the places that we go. And we camp a lot. We don't tent camp, we're too old for that. But we did have a travel trailer that we use quite a bit. But we just sold it. So we stay a lot of times at KOA camps in their cabins which is great, especially during these uncertain times, because you have more control over the health conditions around you when you're staying in these cabins, because you can clean the beds because they're rubber, you have your own bedding, and you cook your own food, and it's really economical. So I'm gonna show you how I get ready and how I save money from all the traveling that we do. So a lot of these things that we use, I'll put links down in the description. And remember, the links on our videos help support this channel and we really appreciate it. So I used to take disinfected wipes with me quite a bit um, and always wipe down a hotel room and the toilet and everything. Um, but with the advent of COVID, um, I started buying this spray bottled um, alcohol, which is kind of hard to find nowadays. Um, I was glad I got this before COVID. Um, but um, you also, uh, you, you know, and I'll bring cotton balls with me and I'll wipe everything down with this. Now, be careful with the 91%. Uh, it will eat anything that's plastic. And they also say, um, because it's so strong and not watered down, like, uh, what is it, 70% alcohol, that it has a hard time killing a virus or a bacteria because it's so strong it can't get into the cell walls. Um, so depending on what the virus or the bacteria it is, um, is whether you want the 91%, the stronger kind, or the weaker kind, which is the 70% because it's more watered down. So just keep that in mind. Uh, sometimes I buy both um, just for that factor. But again, with COVID, you, you should probably take alcohol with you to wipe things down. And, what, and what's really nice about these is that you can actually refill them. So you can refill it with anything you want. So uh, that's kind of cool. I also like taking baby wipes uh, with us because, you know, you don't have a whole lot of water. Um, these cabins we stay in don't have bathrooms in them. Um, so this is nice to have to wash your hands off or wipe a surface down with. Um, so we use it for quite a bit, uh, quite a few things, uh, wiping down the picnic table, whatever. So now that, you know, it's a spray bottle, what you can do is you can take those baby wipes I told you about, spray down the plastic bed in the cabin and use the baby wipe to spread it around. So that's pretty cool. Also, it helps, um, you know, get the smell out also by wiping it all up, um, with a towel or a paper towel. Um, so you do this first one you get into the room keep the windows open and it will evaporate So I also like to take uh, little things of hand sanitizer spray and uh, Lysol for when I'm in areas that I don't have control over the cleaning um, So I've actually been using these for years um, To clean up hotel rooms when we walk in um, you know Remote controls are filthy, you know, somebody touched the, the sink, you know, I, I really feel that cleaning um, prior to COVID wasn't that great and I still don't want to put my life in other people's hands. So um, I take my own cleaning stuff. I also take some laundry pods with me. Um, I usually take about six um, and most of the KOAs have laundry um, and so that's going to save you a lot of money too uh, you know if you it's you know not that expensive to do your laundry there but it is expensive to get soap so I always have this on hand because you just never know 
So I usually uh, put these in Ziploc bags um, and then I don't have to take a big container with me. So um, like I said at the KOAs, uh, you can bring your, you bring your own bedding uh, in the primitive cabins. They don't have bathrooms. Um, and so, you know, we bring all our own towels and stuff. We usually bring beach towels um, and you just dry them outside the cabin. Um, so this really kind of helps with the control of your own health um, because you're not depending on other people to wash your sheets and your towels and stuff. Um, so with everything that's going on, this even makes it um, a healthier option than staying in a hotel. So one thing that has really saved us a lot of money was buying a cheap microwave and we take it with us and use it in the cabins. That way we can heat up all the food that I've made ahead of time. We got, I got this for 30 bucks at Walmart. I mean, really? We also bought online um, a little Mr. Coffee. Uh, you spend a lot of money on coffee on the road. Uh, this has saved us a lot of money, so we take all our creamers and sugar that we like in our coffee, and it just has worked out wonderful. So rather, we, we get up early, nothing's open, so having our coffee maker is just wonderful. One piece of advice I have about these coffee makers, keep the box, because then when you're traveling, you can just put it back in the box, and it keeps it nice while it's rumbling around in the car. So keep the box. We also have a little grill that we take with us um, because sometimes wood can be very expensive too and we always seem to have propane on hand and so that also helps. Another thing that we've invested in is we have these little fans and we also have a heater we take with us. Oh my God, I can't tell you how much the heater has saved us in the past. Um, you know, well, some KOAs have heaters and fans in them, some don't. And they never say on the website whether they do or not. So we always have a fan on hand and we always have a heater. Um, we were just on a trip in the beginning of June. You think you don't need a heater? It got down to the 20s at night in the Black Hills. And we would have froze to death uh, without that heater. And then the next day it was 85 degrees and it was really warm in our cabin without a fan. But we had our own. So I really highly recommend that you bring those for creature comforts. The one thing I don't take with me are pots and pans. These can stay at home. I pre-make all my food and I leave my Coleman stove at home also. You know, mom's on vacation too and I don't wanna cook. So I do all my cooking ahead of time and with the microwave, all we have to do is heat up the stuff I've already made. And I'll tell you what, if we feel like pancakes, KOA is known for their pancake breakfasts. So I will splurge on that. So we definitely bring our own liquor. Uh, neither one of us drink beer, where we drink wine and vodka, of course, for our martinis. Um, and it's so much more economical to just bring your own alcohol and not go out drinking. Um, and there's nothing better than uh, having a glass of wine around the campfire and watching the sunset. So I usually use these containers. Um, so we can just put all our, you know, things that crush like bread and chips into these. Uh, they work quite well. Um, and what's nice too, if you get the ones with the holes on them, uh, when it's hot out, it helps um, keep the drawer cool with all your stuff in it. What's nice about this plastic container is that it's flat. Um, so it's easy to pack in the back of the car. Um, and I put our bread, and uh, utensils and things like that in here. You can actually fit quite a bit in this and it works so much better than the taller um, containers. Bread fits just perfectly in there because the, the, um, the sides are high. So one of the things is I make sure that we have enough um, reusable cups. Um, we use our water bottles over and over again. Um, I always bring our own coffee cups and we actually reuse these for any kind of other kind of drinking also um, to limit the paper goods that we take. Um, it really, really helps um, with the cost when you don't take that many paper goods, not to mention the environment.
The other way that I save a lot of money is making my own food. So I do a lot of food prep, usually around the weekend before we go, and I do, I freeze a lot of it. Um, so let's look at some of the things that I make. For dinners um, on the fire um, pit, I usually freeze up, um, I get some pre-made hamburger patties then I don't have to make them in the campsite. And we have a grill um, that we just put over the fire pit and throw these patties on. So between a hot dog dinner and chili and uh, hamburgers, uh, we do really well. I always take my gluten-free breads with me, all my hot dog buns and my gluten-free hamburger buns and all that with me because trying to find bread products that are gluten-free while you're on the road is extremely difficult. Um, and I'm not the only one, I'm the only one that's gluten-free in my family, so I have to carry both. So a lot of times I make chili. Um, I kind of mix it up, sometimes I make like chili con carne and put corn in it, and I freeze it. So when I put it in the cooler, then it kind of acts as its own little icy for a while. And then I freeze my little egg cups that I make. Um, and because these are going to be in a ice cooler, uh, there's a lot of moisture. So I always, on anything that I bag like this, I always put um, about three to four um, paper towels inside. Um, I try to layer them so they're thicker and they absorb any kind of excess moisture that might happen to be in the ice cooler. It's actually worked very, very well. Because remember too, as these defrost, they're putting out a lot of moisture. So these are my veggie ones. They have shredded carrots. Uh, sa I sauteed some green onions and some uh, hot peppers. Um, you know, jalapenos, whatever kind of peppers you want. You can even use a, you know, a can of green chilies. Uh, just make sure you drain them real well. Um, and we also have some chorizo in the in these. So yum. And you know, they're good cold. Uh, they're good hot, um, however you want to do them, you just pull them out of the cooler while you're camping that morning and boom, you're good to go. I usually make some kind of muffin. Um, these are uh, my gluten-free corn muffins um, and gluten-free tends to break apart really easily and so on a camping trip, they could break apart really easily. So um, I like making cornmeal because cornmeal tends to be a little more durable when it comes to gluten-free. Mm, these are good. I guarantee your family won't even know they're gluten-free. These are excellent. Recipe on our blog. So we usually eat a lot of sandwiches um, and the sandwich meat I usually freeze. Um, and then I usually bring some nut butter stuff also. Um, we have a lot of uh, crackers and cheese and things of that nature. And then for dinners, we do your typical hot dogs, but I always um, buy the really natural ones, like boar head, um, because I can't have the nitrates and I'm not a big hot dog person, but these are really, really good and really good for you. I don't know about really good for you, but if you're gonna buy a hot dog, buy um, ones that don't have nitrates in it. Boar head's a great brand. So these falafels are really nice to take. They freeze very easily and they're gluten-free um, or they, I should say they're wheat-free. You know, don't get hung up on the word gluten-free. Um, there's really, the only difference is, is it doesn't have wheat in it. Um, but these are made out of uh, garbanzo beans or better known as chickpeas. Um, and it's a Mediterranean dish and they heat up really well in the microwave. Um, and again, we take our microwave with us. This is a local brand that we love. Um, but uh, as you can see, I have them in my freezer. So you can put them in a pita, throw some lettuce and some cheese. Um, you know, they're good with sour cream or you can do some of the traditional sauces. Um, but it's a nice thing to have um, if you've got the microwave. So snacks can be very expensive on the road. So make sure that you bring plenty of snacks. Um, we, I'm always big on nuts. Um, we have Trader Joe's here in Colorado and they always have the best nuts that you can get. Um, you know, these are sesame seed with honey and chili and garlic, onion, but you know, garlic and onion pistachios. Um, these are my favorite, the coconut cashews. Uh, they're basically sprinkled with coconut, they're really, really good. Um, so I always find really good um, stuff at Trader Joe's. 
I also like getting this whipped cream at Trader Joe's because it's these small little containers and they don't have to be refrigerated ahead of time and they fit just perfectly into my container. So as you can see, quite a bit fits in here. You know, bread's perfect, um, chips, everything. And I haven't even finished um, filling it up, so you can get quite a bit. Another thing I like to use are these big two gallon bags. Um, I am not a big fan of ice that comes from the grocery store or from the little mini marts. They just melt too quickly. So I use the ice from my freezer, uh, which doesn't melt so quickly and fill up these two gallon bags. What's nice is they lay flat in your cooler. Um, and so you can put one on the bottom and one at the top and it fits really well. So as you can see, this is a one gallon bag and these are two gallons. So they're, they're really nice to have. And you can refill them really well with that store-bought ice on the road and it doesn't melt all over your food. That's the key to this too. Um, you know, just throwing your ice in there just gets everything saturated and wet and adds too much moisture. Um, and you know, so a lot of your pre-made food like, you know, you know, like the egg cups I make, they just get too moist. So putting them in these bags keeps that moisture away and really also helps insulate the ice very well. So these are great to have. See how much that holds and it's all really good ice and you can get it nice and flat. I'll put this on the bottom of the cooler and it's perfect. So you see how perfectly that just fits into the bottom of our cooler? So this is chili frozen solid, so it acts as kind of an icy. These are all the egg things, they're frozen solid. They act as an icy, the meat's frozen solid. Um, so between the ice on the bottom and these frozen items, this should keep this pretty cool um, until we get to the camp and start emptying it. As you start emptying food and eating it and stuff, you have room for more ice. Make sure to check out the links in the description. They help support this channel. And thank you so much for coming by. You have no idea how much we appreciate it.